Do you ever wonder who makes a better quality telescope? Is it William Optics or is it Sharpstar? Today we have four telescopes in front of me and we're going to compare the build quality, the quality of the paint, the machining quality, the mechanical performance of the telescopes and I'll give you my thoughts on this. The video is not focusing on optical performance. Optical performance varies because these are not the same optical design Plus, I do not have the skill to do an accurate assessment of the quality of these tel telescopes optically. I'm talking purely about the mechanical quality of these telescopes. So today we have uh, four telescopes. We start with the Sharpstar 130mm HNT telescope. This is an f2.8 uh, corrected uh, Newtonian. It has a built-in corrector over here. Then we have the Ascar FRA 300. This is... Uh, a sub-brand of Sharpstar. Ascar is a sub-brand of Sharpstar. It is an imaging telescope. Again, this is a quintuplet, so it's got a, you don't need a field flattener or corrector, which is beside the point in this video. We're not comparing specs. We're comparing workmanship and uh, quality of build. And we have the William Optics GT71 and the William Optics uh, Zenith Star 61. So let's get started. First of all, in terms of uh, model range, I would say these two are comparable because these are both targeting, uh, they're targeting uh, astrophotographers and uh, they're roughly the same size, sort of similar in terms of uh, the target audience. And this one is an astrophotography telescope, but it's a completely different design, but we can still use it to compare the workmanship of the telescopes. While this one is a more entry-level refractor. Let's start with this one. This is the most expensive telescope on the table. This is the 130mm HNT from uh, Sharpstar. Okay, let's start with this telescope. This is the most expensive unit on the table and it's an f2.8 telescope and you'd assume that uh, it is the most expensive telescope on the table that you'll have the best quality workmanship out of all the telescopes on this table it's actually the worst in terms of workmanship let's start with the focuser i'll bring my microphone closer i don't know if you can hear that the focuser it does allow you to fine focus it does have sort of a crunchy feel to it doesn't sound smooth and uh, it's just not the sort of uh, focuser i would expect at this price point we can then move on to the workmanship of the rings the anodizing shows some defects in small areas the machining tools i'll bring this close to a camera so you can take a look You can see the machining marks over here, and you can see that the tool path for the CNC milling, it's overshot, and you've got a bit of a notch over here, and it's repeating throughout. There's obvious defects in the anodizing, and uh, there's plenty of places where you find the quality of the anodizing isn't that great. The carbon fiber tube is pretty good, it's decent. Uh, there are plenty of defects back here. It's come out of the factory with the, some muck from the factory, which I would have expected they would have cleaned it up. The thumb screws are very small. They're difficult to operate. And the knurling, if you're into machining, you know that knurling is quite challenging. The quality of the knurling on the screws is not that great. And if you don't know what knurling is, it's the textured pattern on the screws. So this is the 130 millimeter. Actually, let's, let's go further. Let's check over here. The secondary mirror is, uh, the mirror cell is quite good in terms of workmanship. The finish is much better than the rest of the telescope. The flocking is well installed. The cap, no comments here. It's actually of much better quality than the rest of the telescope. Optically, these telescopes are fine. We've used them before. 
uh, we have one of these that belongs to us as a business. So they're great optically, but it's, uh, the workmanship could be better at this price point. Next, we move on to the FRA 300. This one has much better quality anodizing. Overall, the workmanship on the anodizing is much better quality. Uh, it's got sort of a metallic metal flake finish in the anodizing. The rotator is very nice. It's pretty smooth. Moves very well. I like that. The focuser has the same problem as the HNT 130. However, it is smoother. There's no sound you can hear. Look at that. It's just not as smooth as the William Optics focuser, but it is much better than the 130 millimeter HNT. It is a much better built telescope. The rings are much uh, better machine. There's no machining marks. There's no tool marks on the rings. I uh, would comment, however, that the, again, they've put very small thumb screws, which are not comfortable when you're trying to tighten something down. They have uh, a good thumb screw over here on the rotator and a good one on the dew shield. But the ones they put for the finder scope is not that great. This knob is much better quality than uh, the system that's put on the 130 millimeter, which actually just uses Allen keys. Let's move on to the GT71. First of all, William Optics likes to put these protective covers on their fine focus mechanism. I don't know how useful it is, but it's a nice touch. The focuser is silky smooth. It's truly a pleasure to use. The fine focus is also very smooth. I also found that the fine focus mechanism when compared to the Sharp Star is a much more comfortable size to use overall. And overall, all the knobs are much bigger than the Sharp Star, which is much more comfortable to use. Again, we come back to the knurled pattern. The knurled pattern on the FRA 300 is a much more subtle knurled pack pattern. Over here, it uh, almost looks like gear teeth, which uh, gives you options when it comes to automation. So for example, if you wanted to put uh, a motorized focuser without disassembling your focuser, you want to use belts to drive it. I just feel this might be a better mechanism. The thumb screws they provide are much better. If you notice, all the thumb screws on the William Optics, all the thumb screws have a much longer shank, which you can grab onto. And uh, the knurling is just beautiful. It's really beautiful knurling. Now, I know the knurling does not affect the performance of the telescope, but the truth is it really does add to the beauty of the telescope. The workmanship on the screws is much better. The, the height of the screws, the gripping area is much thicker. So it's more comfortable in your thumbs to tighten the screws down. Uh, I would say when it comes to the locking screw for the rings, the sharp star is better. The smaller locking screw for the rings is just uh, doesn't allow you to put as much pressure on there to tighten it down. If you're wearing gloves, if it's a bit cold, it's nice to be able to tighten it down without having to put too much force on your fingers. We I forgot to mention one thing, the paint job. I think these are both powder coated. The white powder coating on the Sharp Star looks much cheaper than the white powder coating on the William Optics. If we bring these closer to the camera and compare the two, I don't know if you can see that. The, it just has a bit of a sheen to it that looks a bit cheap. I, I don't like it, it just doesn't appeal to me. This one has a more matte finish powder coating and it just looks more consistent. The texture just looks much smoother. If we go on to the Zenith Star 61, is it, I think this is the cheapest telescope on the table here and honestly it's the most beautiful telescope on the table. I love this gray color. It's, it's just so appealing. It looks so nice. The anodizing is just perfect. The workmanship, if you 
go into the details. Let's get in here and get you close. If you're machining parts and you're machining pockets and you can get to finish this smooth inside there, that means you're taking the time to do a good job. You're, it takes, it costs time to get a good finish in a pocket and smooth it out. And time is money. So they've taken the effort to do a better quality job on the William Optics in general. They've even anodized the thumb screw over here. Uh, come on, that's beautiful. That's just beautiful. The focuser is just as smooth as the other, the GT71. They have gone for lower profile thumb screws on this uh, telescope, which are not as comfortable as the ones on the GT71. But again, the workmanship is just amazing. Let me bring this up close. I, I want you to see the difference in quality between the thumb screws. Just look at the, look at these thumb screws. They've got scratches and they're not that smooth. They've got machining marks. And look at these, these have been polished smooth. They're mirror finish. They're plated, I don't know, is this chrome plated or something? And they're just so much better. Look at, look at the knurling pattern on that. Look at the knurling pattern on this. Look at the size of the grip, how small it is. If you're wearing gloves and you're trying to tighten down your finder scope or guide scope, and look at the size of these screws over here. They're so much better. So, in my opinion, when you're paying a premium for a William Optics telescope, there's a reason you're paying a premium. I have seen reviews that compare the telescopes optically, and I believe that uh, sharp stars do quite well optically. We have had some issues with uh, consistency, but overall they're pretty good. You are more likely to get a good unit than you are to get a bad unit. But William Optics is just at another level. I think that when you're paying the premium for William Optics, you're getting your money's worth. Now, some people, they just want to get the best optical performance possible for the money they have. There's nothing wrong with that. Go for a sharp start. It's a good telescope. It's a great telescope. But if having a beautiful piece of equipment gives you pleasure in your hobby, if it just makes it that but much more enjoyable when you're operating your equipment, honestly, William Optics are at another level. I would go as far as to compare the quality of the workmanship in terms of beauty, purely in terms of beauty, with a couple of uh, large Teleview telescopes I've seen. And uh, the Stereview telescopes are high quality instruments. They're outstanding. They've got amazing optical qualities. But honestly, they just don't look as good as this. This is a much more beautifully made telescope. They're just, uh, you see, the, these are, telescopes are just, uh, they're, they're instruments, but they're also, they also have a visual appeal. They give us pleasure when we use them. Part of the pleasure is when you set up your telescope in a star party and it's just like wearing a nice shirt or having a nice watch. It's, it, there's pleasure in that. It gives, the, the beauty is part of the enjoyment in the hobby. And honestly, the workmanship on William Optics telescopes is just amazing. They're really, truly stunning telescopes. I hope you like this video. It's just a quick one. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I try to answer every single comment I get. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.